Hello everyone, great to have you on the channel here of Media Mark Weather. Welcome. We have a lot to talk about with the tropics. Obviously, we're going to be talking about Tropical Storm Helene here becoming Hurricane and a major Hurricane Helene. And that is going to be targeting the eastern Gulf Coast, in particular Florida. We're going to look at all the impacts and just how strong will this storm become? Will it become a Category 3 or maybe even a Category 4? Let's get into it. Our infrared satellite view showing this system. Helene is a massively rapidly strengthening system here. Look at the convection blowing up right around the center. Extreme intensification through the next 24 to 48 hours. So we're going to be looking at our tropical model here. Look at Helene. Yeah, this is getting a much better organized storm. You can see this is going to be a hurricane uh, by tomorrow here. And then look at this category three and landfall here. Up around Big Bend area, east of Apalachicola, right around just southeast of Tallahassee here. So this is going to be a really close one for many uh, locations here along the west coast of Florida. But there will be big impacts. All right, so let's take a look at our hurricane model here, Helene. And let's put this into motion. As we look out here in time, this is actually bending towards Cancun as we head towards the overnight hour. So it's going to get very close here, the center of circulation, as it intensifies towards hurricane status. And then as we get into the day on Wednesday, you can see it start to enter the Gulf of Mexico as a 980 millibar low. At this point, it's a hurricane. And then accelerating to the northeast here, that is going to be in response to an upper level low across the Gulf Coast and Mississippi River Valley. There is a trough up here, and that's going to draw this system more towards the Florida coastline here, uh, the eastern Gulf Coast region. You look at here by 2 a.m. on the 26th. So Thursday is our big day. Get an idea of how large this circulation is. There's feeder bands all the way down to Havana. Now watch this. All of the eastern quadrant of this storm, you're going to have to watch out for tornadoes, obviously, but Naples, Cape Coral, Northport, Sarasota, Tampa Bay, all the way northward to Apalachicola, please be preparing. Uh, obviously, the worst of it's going to probably likely be uh, from the Tampa Bay region northward here up the coast, but still look at these eastern feeder bands here as we head towards 2 p.m. on Thursday. They still moving into these areas. Tampa Bay, you're going to have a lot of surge coming in. Uh, areas where we'll see 5 to 8, maybe 10 feet. And further up the coast, 15 to 18 feet potential here. This is not looking good. It's strengthening to a 944 millibar low here towards 5 p.m. So we're getting just close to the landfall point here. And there it is, 8 p.m. It is inland near Perry, east of Tallahassee north of Cedar Key here. So Big Bend area, Apalachicola to the west here. And I want to bring your attention. Feeder bands will still be feeding in even south of Tampa here. And this is where we start to have that inland buzzsaw effect. Valdosta, Georgia, all the way up into central Georgia and parts of South Carolina. I think you're going to see some hurricane force gusts out of this. So get prepared for extended power outages here. Look how fast this is going to be moving. Here's 11 p.m. Thursday night. And then there is 2 a.m. 2 a.m. on Friday morning here. So look at this. This is still retaining a lot of its characteristics as we head through 2 a.m. on Friday morning. And look at that. It's still wrapping up here. Tremendous amount of wind and rain. Obviously, they'll get 6 to 10 inches in many areas. Another threat, if I just back this up a bit, the eastern side in particular, you're going to have to watch out for tornadic action here. So, And this is going to expand northward to the Carolinas. So let me just continue to put this into motion here. Here's 5 a.m. on Friday morning. You could have tornado threat all the way into South Carolina, all the way to central North Carolina here, and tremendous winds continue. So you're going to be dealing with strong damaging wind gusts as well as those tornado threats. And then look what starts to happen. It starts to get drawn back towards the west. 
into that upper level low. And before we dive more into the models here, I just want to let everybody know if you made it this far in the video and you love it or like it, smash that like button. It really does help everyone. Question or comment down below. I love to read your questions or comments. And don't forget, if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe bell notification button so you're alerted with all my future weather video updates. And don't worry, I'm trying my best to try to figure out what's wrong with the notification system. Many of you are getting them late or never at all. So I am working on that. Hopefully we can get that fixed. Let's continue. All right, so if we take a look at our GFS model here, we'll get a little bit. It's not completely done loading, but here we go. Look at this, the 25th here at 11 a.m., Wednesday morning, it's exiting the Caribbean here near Cancun, very much like the hurricane model, and the GFS intensifying and deepening this very rapidly, looking very much like a donut. If we get our three-dimensional view here, you can see with respect to the Florida coast, there it is. So the eastern side of this system is going to be plowing right into uh, areas just north of Tampa Bay here. So these areas, especially this area of the Florida coast, you're going to see those surges in excess of that 10 to 15 feet plus. Tampa Bay, probably 5 to 8 plus here. So please stay tuned. This is going to be a problem uh, not just with the surge, but also the inland flooding as well. Wind damage is going to be tremendous with this storm as well. We see the GFS deepening to 974 millibars here, right about the same location as our hurricane model here at 5 p.m. on Thursday, the 26th. Let me just go slow here because this thing's really accelerating. There it is, 8 p.m. GFS is a little bit slower than the hurricane model, bringing it ashore here right south of Tallahassee, right near Perry. So the eye wall, essentially, in this region, that's where the worst damage is going to occur. And here it is. It has its eye on South Georgia as well. Tremendous inland wind damage and flooding threat. Look at that. It's still retaining some of its northern eye wall deep into Georgia here. So that is the concern that this thing's going to be moving so fast that it's going to not have as much time to weaken. There is going to be some dry air, which I'll show you in the dry air loop uh, momentarily. And there also is some wind shear, so that should help weaken it a bit. All right, so here we go with our European model here. Very much similar. It's nice to see model agreement here right around the Cancun area here, 11 a.m. on Wednesday morning. And then emerging into the Gulf of Mexico the European model has been intensifying this even more rapidly as well. Here's 11 a.m. on Thursday. So here's the big day. So you can see that how large the storm is. It's practically the size of Florida, so to speak. And as we continue in time here, let me just back it out here because you can see we have this trough up here to the north and this upper level low. That is what's drawing this to the northeast like this. So essentially, this system is going to be drawn up the west coast of Florida here. And if you look, there's going to be heavy rain well in advance of our storm. I'll show you that in our future radar momentarily, too. Uh, but here it is at 8 p.m. This is kind of interesting. The European is the slowest solution, bring, starting to bring it on shore towards 8 p.m. So this is the time scale. It's definitely late afternoon to early evening here. Uh, and then here we go. It's moving into South Georgia by 11 p.m. So... Europeans bringing this down to 984, 988, and then up into parts of Georgia, the Carolinas. You can see those eastern feeder bands is making it as far east, but there it is on the 27th at 2 p.m. So this thing's booking it towards the north and then eventually the northwest back towards our upper level low here. One thing I want to make note, I know I have some viewers down in the Miami, South Florida area. There's going to be continued conveyor belt here of moisture, and we'll go over those rainfall amounts momentarily. And taking a look at our wind speed here, gusts indicated here on the European model. Here it is coming in for Thursday. Look at this. Heading right up the coast. Look at some of these gusts exceeding 60, 70. Obviously, some of these here into the darker. We're going off the scale here. 70, 80 plus miles per hour this is going to get up towards 115 120 gusts to as high as 140 in some of these areas and look at inland there into inland georgia let me just back that up one frame look at that that is 73 mile an hour wind gust in south central georgia this is not good at all and this wraps up very quickly up here into the southern appalachians 50 60 mile an hour gusts 
And let's take a look at the uh, GFS model. You can really see it really nicely here with the wind speeds. Yeah, getting into Tampa Bay here. If we just back that up one frame, 60, 70 mile an hour gusts, maybe as high as hurricane force. But there it is. There you can see the eye. Some of these winds, 75 plus moving on shore here. And look at South Georgia as we head overnight uh, about 1, 2, 3 a.m. Look at that. This model here, the GFS, is a little bit more easterly into parts of Savannah all the way up into parts of South Carolina here. So we'll have to see the model trends because there's some wobbling going on here with the models. But you can see that's getting up into parts of the Car Western Carolinas, uh, 50, 60, 70 mile an hour gusts as we get into Friday morning. And here we go with the GFS here, thanks to Tropical Tidbits. This really puts things in perspective here for Florida. Look at this just rocketing up the west coast of Florida here on Thursday. Thursday is our crucial day. There is that those wind speeds here, uh, essentially a knot. So this purple area, 64 to 80, as much as 96 to pushing almost 105 knots here. Uh, just prior and during landfall here. And there, look at this, 96 knots into eastern parts of Georgia. This is this is really, really worrying me, especially for inland areas. This is a tremendous buzzsaw inland. Get prepared for a tremendous amount of power outage action. And look at our simulated satellite here. Look at the size of the storm of the eye here on Thursday. Right around Thursday, early afternoon, and there it is moving inland. That looks very, very ominous. So this is always something really nice to look at. Our cyclonic vorticity here gives us a really good idea what's going on upstairs in the atmosphere. There's that trough hanging out. You got the cyclonic cutoff low here. And then watch this as we go out here in time. We're going to watch our hurricane be pulled up here into the eastern Gulf of Mexico. You see our cutoff low, our upper level low kind of just sitting back here. There's the trough axis helping funnel this to the north here towards Florida. And as we get into later Thursday there, there you can start to see these systems retrograde. This one's retrograding towards the southwest, and that allows this system to come up like this. So essentially, th before this upper level low can capture this hurricane, it's going to come around like this, and they're going to kind of do a little dance around each other, so to speak. So that is exactly what's basically steering this system. It's a very interesting scenario. And it's all about, you know, balance and seeing how these models balance it out. And so far, the models seem to be doing a very good job at this. And here it is on the Euro at the exact same time. Look at this. Pretty much on candy here. Back through parts of Arkansas. There's our hurricane. Maybe just slightly to the east. So there'll be wobbles here. But here it is. Let me just put it on a little loop here. And I can show you as it comes up like this, there's the retrograding back as our hurricane comes up to the northeast like this. And there it is, capturing it essentially by Saturday morning. And thanks to the National Hurricane Center here, look what we got going on here for storm surge. There's that 10 to 15 feet in this fuchsia color here. And then that's just north of Tampa Bay all the way up uh, just east of Panama City and Apalachicola here. And then look what we got going on here for Tampa Bay. This is five to eight feet all the way down into the yellow here. This is the three to five feet foot range. So we're going to have this surge all the way around here and another area up towards 12 feet as well into the red. So this is going to be very crucial uh, development here as we see some extreme storm surge coming in off the Gulf. I wanted to show you the dry air analysis here. Thanks to Tropical Tidbits. There is our moisture across the eastern Gulf. Here is the only fly in the ointment for in extreme intensification. This is why this thing's probably not going to go up towards, obviously, a high-end 4 or 5, although it could make it to, you know, a low-end 4. It's plausible. Look at this dry air coming right in behind it. This is about just after noon hour on Thursday, September 26th. So look at this. Yeah, 967 millibar here on the GFS. That dry air is flooding in very quickly. I uh, see all that moisture to the north. So yeah, essentially what we have going on is that system's being cut off and becoming extra tropical by the weekend here. I just wanted to show you a feature here uh, as we get into Sunday. Look at this across the Caribbean. This is one feature we'll be watching, a very vigorous tropical wave moving westward here. It may try to initiate into something here around Jamaica 
Uh, so I just wanted to throw that out there for you. I'm not forgetting about you here rest the, for the rest of the Caribbean islands. I definitely want to remain very vigilant here. And look at that. It's developing it here on the GFS by October 3rd. And bringing it into the Bahamas is a hurricane. We'll have to keep an eye on this. And here we go with the intensity here. Thanks to Tropical Tibets. Look at this. Yeah, Category 3, most of the systems bringing it up this range. Some are saying maybe this has a chance to become a 4. It's a very narrow window of opportunity. Would not completely rule it out. But there will be gusts that are on the low end Category 4 range. 130, 140 mile per hour gusts. So looking at the euro here, very similar scenario. There it is, 979 on the euro. So the euro continues to intensify this, but look what's hanging out just to the west. There's that dry air, dry air to the east as well with that subtropical high. There it is to 976 millibar there on Thursday evening. That dry air flooding in pretty quickly. It should actually cut off the moisture here in Tampa Bay by the time this reaches landfall according to this dry air so once this dry air wraps all the way around obviously look at this it's still 986 millibars though in the southern Appalachians that is going to keep this cranking as a massive wind and rain machine and I cannot emphasize that enough now here's that other tropical wave that the GFS was picking up on moving through the lesser Antilles here it is Looks like the European model continues to really kind of try to spin this up towards Central America. Obviously, the euro typically is uh, very much like this. But there is that storm the euro keeps bringing in uh, just east of the Lesser Antilles. Where will this go? Well, I'm hoping next video update that I have, I can show you more about where this potential storm could be headed in the coming days. And if we take a look at wind shear analysis here, this thing's got a full fletch of less than say five six seven eight nine knots here of wind shear this is this is what you want to see for an exploding hurricane and there it is not till it starts to reach the coastline here does it start to get into some tremendous wind shear so obviously the dry air and the wind shear will really win out eventually on this system but not till just after landfall so this thing's got a full fletch to a full fetch, so to speak, to strengthen right up to landfall here. And I did want to bring you to your attention here, watching that system approach the Lesser Antilles here on October 4th here on our European model. One thing that could be in the fly in the ointment for that system is this big area of wind shear around Florida and the Bahamas. We'll, we'll have to keep an eye on this because if that continues this direction and this wind shear is heading this way, we could actually see the system get sheared apart. And here's our rainfall amounts. Here's the GFS. This is a tremendous amount of rain as we go through the next couple days here. This is just bad, bad news. Look at this. This is on the order of 10 to 15 inches in some of these locations from North Florida all the way up through Georgia, the Western Carolinas, all the way back here into parts of the Mississippi Valley as well. And zooming in here, you can see, look at this. This is, this is not good. This is a lot of rain. Uh, coming out of this system. And like I said, some of these areas could see 10 to 15 plus inches of rain. It looks like the peninsula of Florida here itself eking out a little bit better here, anywhere from two to maybe three plus inches in some of these locations. And getting into our European run here, look at this. You can see that rain moving out ahead of the hurricane there, focused with the trough. So this is not good news. Um, look at the heaviest rain just off the coastline here of Florida as well. It wouldn't take too much to get some of this heavier rain inland here. Uh, but look at a solid three to four inches plus in some of these locations all the way down to Miami here as well. And I don't want to leave you out here in the Caribbean. Let's take a look at your rainfall amounts here. Yeah, look at uh, Cancun area here, 100 to 150 plus, maybe 200 millimeters. That's getting up towards six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 inches Look at Cuba as well. All the way down to the Cayman Islands, I think you're going to see about 150, 200 by the time this storm's over. Additional showers here into Jamaica, so watch out. You could see 50, maybe 60 millimeters more out of this uh, potentially, but most of the heaviest rain is west of you at this point. And heading to the Eastern Caribbean and Bahamas here, we have a tropical wave moving through. Here it is fr Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday, it heads westward towards Jamaica there. So we could be looking at 45 to 60 millimeters on average here, about, say, three quarters of an inch on average. And then we have the bigger tropical wave showing up here on our European model. We'll have to watch this.
All right, so we take a look at our systems here uh, with our future radar. You can see as we go throughout the day on Wednesday here, you can start to see what's going on here. Not only do we have showers all the way up into the northeast, that's what's with our trough. This is the same trough that's going to help steer the system upper level low hanging back here. So this is what we got going on. Let me just continue to put this into motion as we head throughout uh, Wednesday evening here. Look at these feeder bands just lining up across the Gulf. Yes, you'll still continue to get shower and thunderstorm action here from the Ohio Valley into parts of the Northeast and look at down here into the Southeast. Let's take closer look at this. Wow, this is a lot of moisture coming in. So well out ahead of it. We're getting into some feeder band action. Look at that as far east as Miami, uh, Palm Bay over here, Jacksonville. Lots of moisture just being funneled up the coast. So this is going to get an already saturated ground, even more saturated here. And then here, here's 11 p.m. on uh, Wednesday evening. And then we head into Thursday here. Look what's going on. This system's really exploding with intensity here. This is towards 11 a.m. This is our crucial day. And you can see some of these easterly feeder bands looking very ominous right in the Northport, Tampa Bay area as this thing deepens here uh, to the west. So this is something, a trend we're going to keep a very close watch on here. All right, I just wanted to show you our NAM 3 kilometer future radar as well for point of reference to our HRRR future radar. You can see here 9 p.m. on Wednesday evening. Look at that moisture just funneled north all the way up into parts of the Ohio Valley into the northeast as well so we're looking at a wet day all the way up to the northeast and to the southeast look what's really starts to happen you can really see the system forming on the nam three kilometer look at this this is a tremendous storm one thing that's interesting is the nam three kilometer not only is it intensifying to insane levels but it's wobbling to the west here right in the direction of Apalachicola and Tallahassee area, this region. So it's kind of in disagreement with the other models, but look at that. Classic buzzsaw moving in and then north into Georgia. And before we continue with more weather, check out these awesome, amazing maps that you won't find anywhere else. I am proud to announce that I am now an affiliate with Trilogy Maps. TrilogyMaps.com bringing you the most digital, customizable maps found nowhere else on the internet. These maps are simply stunning. It's an advanced layering system that makes these maps great for making forecast maps with ease or any other maps that you would like to display important information on. The resolution on these maps is simply amazing. From the detail of everything here in the States, and you can also create stunning digital professional layered maps from also across the entire world. And don't forget in checkout, the discount code option, use my code, MediaMark, hit apply, and you will get 20% off your order. So if you want the most professional, customizable, and affordable weather maps found nowhere else on the internet, look no further than TrilogyMaps.com. Link in the description down below along with your discount code. As always, thank you for joining me, everyone, for this special hurricane coverage on what's going to be major Hurricane Helene. I hope you tune in to all my future weather updates. Don't forget, I'm at MediaMark.com. Also, you can find me on Facebook at MediaMark. Also, Twitter at Weather Eastern. And don't forget, please smash that like button or question or comment down below. Share the video with all your friends and family. And don't forget, subscribe and hit that bell notification button.